Hey everybody, welcome to another min-max vlog. Uh, today we're going to discuss talking about how to sideboard map. Um, sideboard mapping is a technique in which you essentially build up a, a specific deck list um, by looking at a metagame that you're preparing for and then making sure that you have post-board 60 cards um, that are all relatively good enough against the decks that you're preparing for. Um, I have in front of us uh, three different kind of deck list tools um, to look at metagames uh, just at a glance. Um, I have a TC Dex, which contains a lot of the, la the, the last few legacy events. Um, MTG Goldfish, which you mostly has the MTGO metagame. Um, and then Hararuya, which has bits of both, as well as kind of the tournament circuit within Japan, which is kind of its own entity. Um, we're going to be doing today's exercise with a deck that I like quite a bit, um, Blue Red Delver, uh, just to kind of holistic, holistically discuss the strengths and weaknesses of, of an archetype such as this, um, and how to alleviate some of those issues that the deck has. So um, the list that you see in front of you uh, is the list that came in technically first place at the last uh, MKM events uh, in Frankfurt. Uh, you'll see here um, that Four Color Delver was listed as the winner according to these results. However, um, this individual was disqualified for shuffle um, manipulation, for card manipulation. So the actual winner of the event is Sven Stolz. Uh, again, if, if I mispronounce the name, I sincerely apologize. Um, on blue red burn or blue red um, delver, uh, my list is I think uh, I swapped out the islands for some snow cover islands because I I think it's just technically correct to be playing snow covered lands uh, in legacy right now, um, and I swapped out a polluted delta. Excuse me, I swapped out a uh, misty for a second delta just due to blue fetch count. Um, I didn't have the misty's magic online there being borrowed so. Um, that's, that's the, aside from that, the deck list that he played, you see in front of you, um, a couple of key things to, to talk about for the most part, um, blue red delver as a, as an archetype and legacy as a whole has been extremely popular, uh, ever since, um, kind of, yeah, empire man search, Trinium nemesis, uh, delver and, um, for the past few months, different kind of supplemental creatures have been experimented with. We've had cycles with Terramander, um, when Austin Collins won uh, that open. I can't remember which city it was in, or I'll write the second. Um, with Terramander, uh, additional copies of like Chain Lightning, just kind of that deck was good, very well positioned um, kind of to where Legacy was going. And it was starting to become this kind of true nemesis arms race. Um, you saw Hardland Fear playing Blue White Delver, and I've played Blue, Blue White Delver on min max content before. Um, the reason for these two color Delver decks, as opposed to their three color brethren, um, is the access to basic lands to kind of sidestep past the the wasteland um, dichotomy and legacy. Not not obviously not fully, um, but you have enough. Your curve is low enough to where you'd be able to operate off of your basics primarily anyway. Um, you're still very color intensive though, so um, the dual lands are still definitely something you need to be playing. So, there's that. Um, the modern iteration of Blue Red Delver, however, kind of cert, um, kind of revolves around Dreader Arcanist, which is a card that I've written countless pieces on max has written countless pieces on um so it, we it, if you follow our content you are no stranger whatsoever to um just how powerful dread horror arcanist is so to th this deck uh first and foremost is a is a blue red deck centralizing itself around dread horror arcanist you'll see other lists um like th this one that I, I i played previously play Four Dreadhor Arcanists, um, and cut down on the true on the young Pyromancers and the true names and such, because this card is just so powerful. Um, it's a it's a two mana Jace, uh, the Mind Sculptor, effectively, in in a lot of circumstances. So, kind of iterating over why this deck is good. Um, it plays basic lands, 
Um, it has a lot of burn. It can go wide. It can play that kind of sticky threat um, that uh, a lot of decks are, are kind of difficult to they have difficulty playing against. It is still a devil deck uh, and so on. Um, it does have several inherent weaknesses, however. Um, first and foremost, uh, Delver as a whole um, it is usually a dog to most combo decks. Uh, what I mean by that is it plays uh, kind of this like very tempo-oriented game, trying to get uh, in in there with uh, like low uh, CMC creatures, um, and creatures that kill Drenner quickly while keeping your opponent just enough off balance. It's a tempo deck. However, um, you'll see in recent times, especially with the advent of Ren and Six, that Delver decks themselves have gotten significantly slower. Um, you're playing multiple copies of this three drop uh, Trinium Nemesis, as well as uh, having a Ren and Six um, kind of enter the fold, create like this very, very grindy. Like lonely sandbar and fiery islet get seen, get um get seen get 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 played quite frequently, uh, which is something that I I think hitherto twenty twelve twenty eleven Delver decks did not could not conceivably consider playing. They were trying to be significantly faster, um, and Dreader Arcanist is a it, it it's a one three. It's it's still only attacks one damage. Um, the advantage of this card is of course how how much more quickly it gets you ahead um and so usually when you're playing uh, like kind of the source of card advantage like you've seen dark confidant and chris's delver in the past um kind of the same concept your, your deck slows down quite a bit because you have more interactive elements and you're digging further and further on into this game plan where you are usually a turn or two slower than the previous iterations of delver decks would be for example blue red delver used to play monastery swift spear um, very very low to the ground, very like price of progress oriented, um, Delver deck, very prowess oriented Delver deck. Um, this is definitely not the same deck at all. Um, it plays significantly differently. It plays a lot slower, uh, and it plays a. I, I hesitate to use the word control, but it does play a more like kind of keep your opponent off balance kind of game plan, um, while not relying too much on getting the opponent like aggressively dead. It, although it certainly has an angle, it is still a Delver deck. Um, so weaknesses include, uh, uh, the, the combo concept, um, Delver decks as a whole are weak against combo, and this is no exception. You have, uh, two ways to attack combo, um, of the recommended four, in my opinion. And just to kind of reiterate what, what I mean by that four, um, I consider there to be four tenets of being, uh, of ways to attack uh, a combo deck that you need to qualify for in order to truly consider yourself favored against that deck. Um, as many of as you can uh, get of these four, the better off you are against said combo decks. Um, fast Clock, Permanent Base Disruption, Hand Disruption, and Counter Magic. Um, if a deck contains all four uh, in relatively uh, easy, to ac easy to access configurations, I consider that deck to be relatively favored against most combo decks. Um, in this instance, this deck has two of the four elements, and most decks in Legacy usually only have two of the four elements. Um, you have a fast clock, a t it's, you're something to have a fast clock, and counter magic, which you have a bit of, but not a ton. Um, so you're not doing you're you're slowing your Delver deck down as opposed to some of the like prowess oriented Delver decks, and you're playing less um, interaction in more cantrips because of of Dreadhor Arcanist and Young Pyromancer and so on. So with that kind of added elements thrown in, that's one of the problems that we're going to look to solve today when we do our sideboard mapping exercise. Secondly, this deck has somewhat um, a fair amount of difficulty with larger creatures, um, usually. Anything with more than six toughness is very difficult for this deck to deal with. Uh, up until the printing of Dreadfort Arcanist, I would say that even anything with like five or four toughness would be difficult to deal with. Um, but Arcanist does change that a little bit, not a ton, but the concept of like using a lightning bolt effect on your opponent's creature and then uh, attacking with Arcanist to flashback lightning bolt effect uh, does go a long way. Um, 
the issue is now that Tarmogoyf is kind of back into the metagame and uh, Tarmogoyfs are very frequently having 6 toughness, 7 toughness with these Ren and 6 um, decks, uh, it's difficult to match up well against the, those archetypes. Um, so bigger creatures are a problem. Uh, I will also say that this deck in particular has a an interesting weakness against uh, Plague Engineer. Um, Plague Engineer, a uh, new card from... Um, oops. Uh, Modern Horizons. Uh, it's essentially a... It's an engineer plague on a stick, but it also has death touch. Um, this card is almost always going to be a two for one whenever it's in play, so it's very powerful. And a lot of these like Ren and Six control decks are playing multiple copies of Plague Engineer in the main deck. Uh, engineer n does a very good job of neutralizing uh, Arcanist, Young Pyromancer, and Unflipped Delver, and does a very good job with slowing down the Delver clock and answering True Nemesis. Uh, this deck does have several answers to it, but doesn't necessarily stop this card from being a two for one on its own. Because when it enters play, it, it will usually either wrap the board or um, f slow down your aggressive clock, um, whatever aggressive clock you can muster. So those are both issues. Um, and you have plenty of removal spells, as I mentioned before. And there's not a ton of ways to really fix that problem inherently, and at least I, I'm still thinking of them. Um, but that's something else to keep in mind. So of note, there have been several ideas thrown around of how to solve those problems. Um, the one I'm worried about the most primarily would be the combo um, kind of issue because Legacy as a whole and seeing these kind of these four color piles appear um, is kind of a feast for combo decks to kind of come in and start to truly obliterate uh, any slow deck trying to play this very grindy game plan without actually having that much of an advantage built into them against combo. Um, you'll see also that uh, control decks are generally more creature oriented as well, and they don't play a ton of counter magic. They're not playing a ton of discard either, because these control decks are trying to play Renisks on turn two, and they can't always curve black uh, discard into Ren and Six on turn two. Um, it's really hard to do that, so the majority of these decks are not playing the one CMC discard, at least my main deck. Um, so without further ado, let's take a look at um, the metagame and how I would personally go about building out a sideboard, um, like a, a cohesive 75 uh, today. So each of these information sources are flawed in some way, usually. Um, TC decks usually um has a, like a an issue with sample sizes in that it reports whatever it can some decks arrive here some do not um mpg top eight has a similar issue and how it reports decks and and so on so it's overall it's extremely difficult to truly get a glimpse at a metagame in a specific moment just due to the fact that your sample sizing uh is next to impossible to fully solidify but for the purposes of this exercise, I think um, we're going to just do something simple and go with the first eight decks here on MTG Goldfish. I think stopping it at these first eight decks, um, may, we'll, we'll maybe throw Grixis Control or, or like Four Color Red and Control um, into this slot as well. Um, the reason being... Uh, that deck is very prevalent, even if this data from MTG Goldfish doesn't necessarily um, support that claim. Uh, it, it's still very powerful. Maybe it might be better to actually do it this way. Um, yeah, we'll 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 look at it. we'll we'll create a list here. So first off, I definitely want to talk about uh, Dark Depths. Oh, actually, that's a, that's another good point to bring up. This deck, like the majority of Delver decks, are is very, very weak to um, Merit Lage to some extent. Um, this specific 75 has a sideboard Vapor Snag, which does go a long way to kind of supplementing that. But um, overall, Delver decks are usually fairly 
unfavored against most strategies trying to put a 2020 into play. Um, we'll we'll try to kind of discuss how to help stop that issue um, here in a moment. So if we look at, uh, so we're gonna start with Dark Depths for sure. Blue Red Delver, uh, Blue White Blade, DNT, Rogue Delver, Mono Red Stompy, uh, Miracles, and Four Color Control Pile. Um, I'll put in a few additional decks on into this list because just due to the fact that they are very prevalent decks, and we want to kind of cover some of the, the the gambit as much as we possibly can. Um, so I'm also adding four color Delver to this. The, the plan is going to be very similar to Rug Delver. Um, and then let's see, Ants. Nine decks. Um, is there something else that maybe we wanted to, to, to put on here? Um, maybe we'll we'll do two separate plans, but they might end up being very similar. So the best way to go about doing this is to kind of take toss aside the concept of having like a sixty and then a fifteen. Um, you want to arrive at your overall seventy five organically. Um, so these cards and then these cards, you want to like kind of not really hold on to any sacred cows um, when you're discussing building a, a cohesive 75. So some of, one of, some of the first things that I wanted to uh, point out is there are things that we're definitely going to, going to be keeping pretty much 100% of the time. We're playing a Delver deck that is two colors, um, and we have... A fair amount of burn um, and we need mana sources and wastelands so just kind of with those in mind we're gonna have build like a starting uh, main deck um, I this is gonna seem somewhat arbitrary while I'm doing it but if you give me a moment I will definitely walk through exactly where my thought process is So, holistically speaking, in order to, in most cases when I'm building Blue Red Delver, I've played a fair amount of different iterations of this deck. Um, I'd like to start with kind of the base of, I'm gonna move this off to the side for a second. I want, I know for a fact I'm gonna be, gonna be playing uh, Brainstorms, Dazes, Delvers, Ponders, and, and, and Lightning Bolts, all as four ofs. Um, as well as Force of Wills. So if we move those off to the side here. So this column number two, um, including the dazes, that is essentially what I believe to be the, the true backbone to any red Delver deck you have to play these 24 spells. Um, some folk like Harlan, um, calling him out here, will play like three dazes um, and go a bit bigger with main deck jaces and whatnot. We're not, we're not gonna do any of that here. Um, this is our primary game plan. This, these 24 spells dictate what our game plan is. Um, then, we, we then examine the reasons to stay two color um, and to maximize our ability to kind of be a Dread Horror Arcanist deck. So in my opinion, four Dread Horror Arcanists is, is 100% uh, something that you should be doing if you're playing two color Delver um, in, in every instance. Uh, I would also say one or one Chain Lightning is, is basically a freebie. Um, and be, just due to the fact that the format is so heavy on opposing Dreadhorde Arcanists that two chain lightning is is considered stock in most cases. So this is the reason to be playing blue red delver uh, and just be the the Arcanist delver deck. Um, Arcanist also kind of asks you to play 
more cantrips because cantrips turn into card advantage with Arcanist. Um, and so I personally like to build with 12 cantrips um, in, in Blue Red Delver. I think that 12 cantrips is just, it lets you kind of glue the deck together. And I think slimming down on them while, excuse me, some people consider it quote unquote spinning their wheels too much. Um, I think it's an important element to be able to keep pace with a lot of decks in the format while essentially exploding with value with Arcanist. Um, and then we have some amount of Treatment Embassies and some young, amount of Young Pyromancers. Um, these threats are probably the worst in your, in, your, in your deck and just how good of a card they actually are. Um, but I believe that you're required to play some amount of either one, just as supplemental creatures um, to be playing in this format. So, uh, Young Pyromancer, I usually go to two or three um, because going wide is very powerful, but you don't want to clog up your hand with too many threats. Um, and True Nemesis, I'll also keep a two or three depending on um, where I believe my flex slots to kind of lie in the main deck. So we have here um, kind of like the, the stock uh, build for Blue Red Delver. From this, you have four additional cards to play with. In some cases, a lot of people will play... Um, actually, we can just take a look at uh, Blue Red Delver decks and see where how where builds deviate. Like this individual appears to have three Young Pyromancer, three True Name as their... And, and, two, and they're playing Stifles, actually. So this is a fairly different uh, iteration of the deck. Um, looks like they're playing Stifles over uh, copies of additional cantrips, which is fine. That's also something you could definitely do. Um, I like Stifle less with Arcanist, just because Arcanist kind of asks you to be so much more pre proactive with how you use your mana. Um, but in, in, in any case, that that's this iteration. If we go to this this individual, they're playing the Swift Sphere version, with it, which is significantly lower to the ground, um, plays Vapor Snags and so on. If we go to look at Ed D'Amico, um, they have Stifles as well. I'd be True Delver um, for... Swift Spears and so on, um, main deck Echoing Truth. That's 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 crazy, um, but a lot of these cases you'll see people spill, fill out their additional slots with, with supplemental counter magic of some sort. Um, in most cases, spell Pierce, uh, spell Snare, um, Force of Negation, uh, and in some cases also supplemental removal. So some people will play Magmatic Sinkhole. Some people will play three Chain Lightnings uh, or Fork Bolt, what have you. For the purposes of this, uh, I'm going to leave those four slots open because what we're going to start doing is building out ideal 60s. So um, I've gotten rid of the sideboard because what we're going to do now is basically create, we're going to move over our main deck contents and then arrive at where we want to be post board against most of these decks. So against Dark Depths, which is the first deck on our list, well, we have a couple of cards that are ex objectively good against Dark Depth strategies, um, which is Vapor Snags. Uh, Submerge is good, but relatively easy to play around um, a lot of the time, so not quite as good. Um, and then, of course, we have Wastelands. Uh, Needle as well is another one. And if you want to get completely crazy, you could play Caracuses. Um, I'm, I'm kind of just listing out all the cards that are relatively good against Dark Depth Strategies. Uh, I don't believe I have any Echoing Shoots on there right now. Uh, and so on. These are cards that people have played in the past. Uh, we're going to add some number of Price of Progresses to our list here as well. And just kind of examine where we want to be after that. So, um, dark depth strategies. So we're talking about mid range depths, um, or this new Hogak depths. Even that deck is starting to see some play as well. Um, so we have surgicals, um, which are good against some, like some of the different variations. Um, just, just, just to note. So. This is what our 60 or our 56 cards is. Um, in most cases against Dark Depth strategies, you could probably board out some number of your Chain Lightnings or your True Names. Um, 
and just hope to go quickly. Uh, these cards, uh, pardon me, uh, you you want to you want to board out some of your threats because your more CMC your higher bigger CMC threats are just very very difficult to land protect and actually race quickly enough in most cases to be able to leverage um, just the the stickiness of true name uh, some most active shells also have access to abrupt decay or um, in the case of land which is actually a different arch archetype altogether. Um, you'll want to keep the tree names in if they're a slower dark depth stack with punishing fires. So just that as a caveat. Um, I'd probably try to stick to Vapor Snag um, and, and as my removal spell of choice uh, due to the fact that it can be gotten back with Arcanist. Uh, Snag can be a very massive tempo play and it also s serves as an additional way to deal with opposing um bigger creatures in general so like goif um scavenging oozes and so on so i think vapor snack is actually a very well positioned card in general right now um and being able to flash it back is just very very powerful so i would probably play those two um i might board out either young paramans or trinium nemesis Depending on if uh, if, our, if we believe our opponent to have Abrupt Decay or Punishing Fire, um, if Punishing Fire, I'd probably leave in the true names to get rid of either uh, get rid of some amount of Young Pyromancers or some amount of Lightning Bolts and Chain Lightnings. Uh, just kind of reconfigure that way. If we were to pick a specific seventy five of someone playing a a um, a Dark Dev Shell, we'll just click on this and go to. See. Well, that's not quite as good. Let's pick on. Let, let's let's go with uh, the seven O list. Um, this is anarchist Abe. It looks like, or someone along those lines. Uh, name not given here. Um, this is Hogak Devs, which is a very difficult, different and difficult deck to to sideboard against. Uh, let's see if. We're gonna look further at I guess it's only Hogak depths on here. Interesting. So maybe we'll maybe we'll we'll shift gears a little bit and look at how to build a subword against a Hogak depths deck. Um against this deck, since it's so like it goes very wide very quickly and it has Hogak, of course. Um I think that Vapor Snag is very, very good against Hogak, uh, just to kind of get through some of those those additional uh, blockers there that this deck can kind of muddy the ground up with. Um, Chain Lightning, not so good. You're you have to you have a lot of creatures you have to kill quickly. Um, like Reclaimer, or you have creatures that just aren't very good against removal in general. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, so that's somewhat difficult to really sideboard against, and it, it does have the Hex Mage, Dep Hogak Depths package. Um, counter Magic, also not great against this deck, at least not soft Counter Magic, hard Counter Magic is, um, because it, ha it is playing 26 lands, so it can play like a fairly heavy um, play around soft permission kind of deck because it can just very easily outrace spell pierces and, and and so on. So snag remains a good card here. Um, we're going to continue to look at additional cards that uh, as we kind of go through, uh, we see are good in certain matchups. So in the blue red Delver mirror match, that's where kind of the the excess threats, like the excess young pyromancers, um, and so on, kind of show up. So if we were to play three and three of each young pyromancer and true name, for example, you kind of get the, the these four cards so far are good in several matchups. 
um, across the board here. Uh, but it's important to note that in the blue red matchup specifically, um, unless if, if your opponent is playing prowess creatures, it's it's very different, of course, because your percent gets significantly worse. Um, but just having a higher threat density is is very important, very powerful. Um, the soft permission in the Delver Mirror is usually atrocious. So cards like Spell Pierce, Spell Snare. Uh, Snare is better than Pierce um, in the Delver Mirror match, but Pierce is very, very egregious. Um, just because there's not a ton of creature, a ton of non-creature spells that matter, um, as almost every fight will be over a creature threat, and whoever has the last standing, the the last creature standing is usually often the winner. Um, so. We'll, we'll come back to Blue-Red Delver uh, and just kind of go down the chain here. Blue-White Blade, um, that's where these bolt effects um, and the additional creatures once again kind of come into play, where Tree Name Nemesis of her own is good against opposing tree names. Um, Vapor Snag, not so good there. Uh, and if we take a look at Blue-White Blade as a deck, uh, this, is, this is a good one to look at. It has multiple Jace the Mind Sculptors um, and Snapcaster Mages and so on. Four Plow, two Council Judgments, and not a ton of other removal. GTA, of course, is the 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 most important card in the matchup. Um, cards such as Pyroblast effects come to mind. Um, I'm putting a, a higher premium overall on how many um, one-mana cards we play. Uh, just due to the fact that the one mana cards overall get additional utility with the Dread Horde Arcanist. Um, there's no real way for us to increase Dread Horde Arcanist's power in an efficient manner while still being applicable in a vast majority of matchups. Uh, many players have played su cards such as ha Haze of Rage, uh, which is clever, uh, if nothing else. Let's pull up Haze of Rage for a moment. Haze of Rage, uh, buyback two, creatures you control get plus one plus zero, and storm. So um, if you play this card, everything increases in um, power, and then you can attack with your now, at the very minimum, two power Arcanist, which can flash it back again, um, which is adorable and good at killing your opponent quickly, but that's not always what this deck is trying to do. And I don't think killing quickly is actually the issue with with Delver. I think it can do that plenty. Um, I think it's kind of applying the ability to beat opposing combo decks and opposing big creatures. So this deck, uh, I think this deck has a tough time beating an, a, an active uh, Dreadhor Arcanist. So you kind of want to ride that card to victory and make it as... N attack with it as often as possible. So in order to facilitate that, we want removal spells of our own, um, abrades to deal with Jite, um, Batter Skull, and other ways that our opponent can have of Stonewalling Arcanist. Um, and Pyroblast effects, because Pyroblast effects are overall good against our opponents, like heavy blue permission, heavy blue creature suite, and heavy blue uh, like haymaker threat um cards such as back to basics don't really hurt us um because we have the basics already plus from not so good either because we're so creature heavy as well so that there's just one thing to think about that's these are all cards that are good against blue red delver um i will go ahead and re-add surgical extraction um this was a card that we had in our list against the depths and the strategy of Wasteland targeting your opponent's Dark Depths and then Surgical Extractioning it, while not likely to work, um, that is one avenue of attack, and the matchup is pretty bad to the point where um, maybe surviving one Dark Depths uh, iteration and then Surgical is, is the best way is the, your best way to victory. So that uh, kind of covers what cards that I think are overall good against um, Stoneblade. Uh, if we go back, look at Death and Taxes. Similar to Stoneblade, uh, Death and Taxes kind of prioritizes overall removal. Um, so like Chain Lightnings, cards like Blazing Volley, uh, 
just due to their opponents like set their of x1 creature threats um spells so like snare pierce and so on are not so good against them texas post board in a vacuum but due to the how dreaden taxes itself sideboards um usually you can get away with leaving in snare dazes um or not dazes rather but but force of wills and so on pierce uh, usually you're never going to have an opportune moment to hold up the one mana you need for spell pierce. You just need to play to the board and deal with your opponent's threats as much as possible. Um, Rug Delver. So Rug Delver, and I think that unfortunately this is going to list four color Delver decks. No? Okay, it pulled up a Rug Delver deck. Um, Rug Delver, if you were to delete the card Tarmogoyf, I believe that Blue Red Delver would easily be able to defeat Rug Delver in a mirror match um, if you were to delete the card Tarmor Wife. So the reason being, you're a two-color mana base, um, and you overall kind of have better creatures uh, that are more utility-based than Nimble Mongoose and Delver of Secrets. Uh, your wastelands are usually one-sided, like your wastelands up against your opponent because you have basics in your deck are, are, are just completely devastating. Um, and, and like your, your, your threats just get you so much further ahead that Rug Delver usually can't keep up. However, Term Goyf is a card. Um, so if you go back to my example of Submerges, Submerge, um, is an interesting card because traditionally it's been used against like the the green delver deck mirror match but i think submerge's time has passed because while it is free it's also relatively easy to play around and you often want to be wastelanding your opponent's green green lands uh, you want to prioritize your opponent's green sources with blue red against rug because if your opponent has less or next to none no green mana they can't play their one card, one trump card in the matchup, which is Tarmogoyf. Um, so Tarmogoyf being so good against you, you have to kind of worry about dealing with it. And the additional threats, the young pyramids are not so much, but Trina Nemesis for sure um, go a long way in helping defeat opposing uh, Tarmogoyfs. Um, the reason young pyramids are in the past did, but because Renin Six exists and can destroy uh, the one type of creatures and keep pace with Young Pyromancer tokens. Not quite as good these days. So additional cards that are usually good against uh, Rug Delver, there aren't really a ton. Um, I'm pulling up Hydro Blast just to talk about it here in a minute, but I wouldn't necessarily board in Hydro Blast. Um, maybe, maybe well, you should reevaluate re depending on how often a play pattern emerges. Um, and again, I have not played the rug versus blue red matchup very frequently, obviously. Um, so, kind of like y you might want to be boarding in the Hydro Blast if you can defend having up the 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 blue mana every turn. But I don't think it's actually going to be that likely. I think you're going to be playing to the board just significantly more often in conditional counter magic like power like. Hydroblast, not quite as good. Pyroblast, however, I think is still good enough because it breaks the part of the true name mirror match. Um, and at any edge you can get into true name mirror match, the better off you'll be. That that is that is my belief. Um, some people play dismember in this list as well. I would caution against playing dismember, however, because your primary target for it is going to be Tarmogoyf. And you'd be very surprised at how easily um, these Ren and Six decks can get Tarmogoyf to, to six toughness, seven toughness. Uh, so that being said, I, I, I don't really like um, the dismembers in a deck like this. All right. Um, we've covered Rug Delver. Let's go to Mono Red Stompy. So Mono Red Stompy, um, this is a deck where the Pierce's Days is Snares. Um, Snare has one target, but uh, the Pierce's Dazes are very, very good. And you worry a lot less about Blood Moon effects. Um, you can still be gotten by Blood Moon for sure, because you don't necessarily have the, have the luxury of being able to fetch for your basics early on. But because you have red creatures, um, 
your blood the blood moons are not quite as prevalent um this is another matchup where echoing truth uh is good um abrades are very very good um and as much removal as you can muster is usually uh something that you want chain lightning is maybe the worst of your removal spells so i can see cutting those in the matchup um hydroblast would be fantastic here um These, these cards are very, very good in, the, in, a, in a matchup like this. Just because, like, the tempo from, from unsummoning something for a turn is just really, really important in a lot of these matchups. Um, so that is Mono Red Stompy. And then Miracles. And another card that is very good against Miracles is Winter Orb. Uh, this card, uh, it's also good against uh, Stone Blade, but less good. This card, uh, combined with Arcanist attacking every turn, is nigh impossible for Miracles to beat as long as because your curve is so much lower than them, and you're getting mana, uh, you're you're basically cheating on mana by drawing a card of, an additional card every turn with Arcanist. So the the downside of you having Winter Orb in play is is a lot less. Um, Miracles also ha like has a tough time dealing with multiple Power Blast effects. Um, and uh, as well as just Dreadhor Arcanist as a whole. So as long as Arcanist sticks and you're able to defend it, uh, you'll usually come up pulling ahead in the matchup uh, in most instances. I will also say that Flusterstorm is a phenomenal card against Miracles in most cases if you can afford to play it. Um, it's not clear that Blue-Red has the ability to play Flusterstorm just due to being so much more sorcery speed oriented, but very powerful in that matchup. Um, four color control. So this would be let's see. Four color levels. You can go with this one. Sure, this is this is close. So four color Leovold or four color control is like the Renin Six. Um, well, no, this is not quite right either. I'm looking for the snow deck. Here we are. Dar we'll, we'll, we'll start with Daryl's list as kind of a baseline. So four color control um, is a deck with a plethora of spot removal and a multitude of ways of kind of create two for ones. Um, and it plays basic land so that wasteland is not necessarily the end all be all. However, wasteland is still very good against this deck. Um, it can still play around it. So a deck like this, uh, you want to rely on non-creature uh, forms of interaction. Uh, enchantments are very good. Uh, Winter Orb is okay, um, but because they have ways to kill Winter Orb, it's not always the best, but it's still quite good in this matchup. Um, the enchantment that... And, and, and Planeswalker is also very good as well. So these cards... Uh, Narsets and so on. Those are great cards to have in a matchup like this. And then your... Suite of blue elemental blast, red elemental blast, pyro blast, hydro blast, and so on. Um, good in these matchups for sure. This deck will often be tapping out um, and holding up removal on their turn. So the play patterns involved are uh, play a way to get ahead while answering the board uh, at instant speed. Um, so if you keep that play pattern concept in mind, you'll be able to kind of capitalize on it by placing your threats when your opponent wants to be playing. Um, a proactive card uh, or hedging your threats when your opponent wants to be playing a reactive card uh, and, and so on. It's very much a play pattern kind of dichotomy. So that is four card control Ant. Um, another deck where like our copies of Blazing Volley kind of come in handy because they'll often against Delver choose to go for like a fast empty start. 
um, and that is one of our very few outs to empty the worms. Uh, and then Echoing Truth as well, Fluster Storms and Counterbalances in our set are very good in those like combo oriented matchups. Uh, and then for Color Delver, uh, similar to the Rug Delver iteration, except this deck plays black for um, Discard and Abrupt Decay. Uh, your They'll usually trump your threats with their superior removal. So True Name Nemesis um, is probably your best threat in the matchup, except for the fact that your opponent is playing multiple copies of um, Plague Engineer. So you have to worry about that card pretty vehemently um, in order to really truly get ahead in the matchup. Again, non-creature threats that tax your opponent's interactive elements are usually going to be good in those matchups. So here we have a 58 card main deck. Um, well, we have a 56 card main deck of these two cards kind of being additional threats that we deem to be better off in a lot of matchups. So we're gonna put them here. Um, and then I'm gonna put a series of soft permission into this maybe board as well. And we'll see how we wanna map our list to be post board against a lot of these additional cards, uh, additional decks. Okay, so starting off with Dark Depths or Hogak Depths. Uh, very, very difficult deck to sideboard against, unfortunately. Um, but I think, in, so I'm leaving these lands all alone. Uh, I don't think you can really disrupt the 18 land mana base that this deck has, and it is quite mana hungry, um, though it may not seem it. You, you operate it off of two, three lands, but you're going to be using your mana as much as you can. Um, so against Hogak Depths, because Hogak has Trample, um, True Name and the resiliency of True Name not at its best in this matchup. And you want to be kind of, you want to be aggressive enough to kind of keep your opponent off balance while they're summoning their plan and then stopping their plan um, in, in, in that matchup. So ideally I'd want Vapor Snags, Echoing Truth, some amount of cervical extractions to be in my deck. Um, I'm not super able to, I think, uh, rely on true name in the matchup, so I might board them out because you want to again be fast to the board while also interacting with your opponent. I don't think you're gonna ever have you're gonna have the ability to have enough mana to have uh, true name truly be effective. If we look at the deck and how many X ones it plays, uh, it plays quite a few. So it's possible that um, Blazing Volley is a, a good consideration to, to note. Um, and of our options, that's probably the best that we can do. Unfortunately, the matchup doesn't seem very good. Um, you can probably shave some number of daises on the, on, on, in some instances, but most conventional wisdom will tell you to board out daises in the draw. And I believe that people board out days entirely too often in, in Delver decks. I think that days is part of your instrumental game plan of like being fast to the board. And I believe that um, in a matchup like this, where you're essentially racing, um, keeping your opponent off of their 2020 or their 8 8 enough to get in those last few points of damage, um, I believe that your best bet is kind of to be configured in, in, in this way. You don't really want the soft permission. Um, Fluster might be okay, but it, it doesn't seem ideal by any means. And they have Erupt Decays as well and Assassin's Trophies. So basically you're playing to the board as much as possible um, and as quickly as you possibly can. Uh, I would maybe want to board in the Young Paramancer and board out a Daze or a Chain Lightning, uh, depending on uh, what I see from my opponent. Uh, Young Pyromancer is a is a quick way to kind of get to the board and stay ahead of your opponent's like creatures while looking for these six cards to kind of blow the game open in your favor. Um, so these six. So if we go back to our list here, uh, we're boarding in six, and we're taking out five. So that tells me that we probably have one too many cards for this matchup. Um, and 
because I, I, I sincerely do believe that the rest of these cards are pretty much locked in. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We're boarding out seven. We're boarding in seven, and we're taking out... Uh, well, I guess we're not taking cards out in general. We, we have seven in um, our deck, and we have extra. We have one extra card. So what that leads me to believe is that one of these seven cards is maybe unnecessary. So So of these, um, I think that Blazing Volley perhaps has the least worth because you're not really stonewalled by their like creature threats really. Um it combines well to deal with like an un with an with an already create uh big reclaimer. But overall, um their game plan around the creatures is not really stopping what you're doing. So I will say that Blazing Volley is the card that is more likely to get boarded out in a matchup like this. Uh, or not boarded in, rather. So this is where our deck looks like post-board um, against Hogak Depths. Great. So Blue-Red Delver, another beast altogether. Actually, I'll go ahead and create a screenshot for this and save it for later, perhaps. So there's that. Next up, the mirror match. How do we want our deck to look in the mirror match? Um, well, I want as many threats as we can possibly muster. Counterbalance I'll get back to here in a second, but I think it could be quite good. Um, and I want ways to break the young pyromancer parody though i don't think we really need both um i want hydroblast for sure and some number of pyroblasts as well maybe all three so cards we don't really want in these mirror matches um well i could see shaving some number of force of wills but again um we are trying our best to just be as much the board as possible and be as proactive as possible um cards like spell pierce and spell snare don't really have much of a place in our post board configurations maybe spell snare does um, so we'll look at this and we see we have eight cards we want to board in, but four, we have only four slots left. Uh, we, we have four, we have four too many cards, uh, basically is what I'm getting at. So things to note, um, I don't necessarily know if we want two snares in our, in our entire 75 snare is a very difficult card to kind of leverage and two seems like quite a bit. Um, I also see perhaps that the Pyroblasts are not quite as good. Um, they're good, mind you, but the threats that we want to Pyroblast are True Name and Delver. And maybe that many cards of that, that many of that card are just not something that we can truly facilitate. Uh, we can probably shave on, on some of these additional spells like Dazes and Forces. Um, if we really wanted to. So it's possible that we can just board like this and have this post board 60 against um, opposing uh, Blue Red Delver mirror matches. Obviously, you're going to want to not follow this step by step. The point of this exercise is to make sure that we have rough idea of how we want our decks to look post board against a wide, wide field. So the concepts here are um, play to the board, 
don't have as don't have that much conditional counter magic um and just be as efficient as possible So, that is Blue Red Delver. Um, because of that, I could see the counterbalances coming in as well. Um, and that's something you should definitely consider when, when sideboarding with counterbalance in your sideboard uh, against opposing Delver decks because um, on the play, I think it's definitely reasonable to, to do, but on the draw, because you're often going to be under the gun and counterbalance doesn't really pull you back from behind. It just keeps you further ahead in most cases in the mirror match. Um, that is where counterbalance kind of falters, I think. And something you have to keep in mind is because you're not playing, you can't like counterbalance and then force your opponent to play into it and then defend like a wrath with it in most cases. You're not going to be able to leverage it the same way you would with like miracles, for example. Um, so because of that, you have to use counterbalance as kind of like this. You have to try to be very disciplined with counterbalance and use it either on the play uh, and then have a plan ar around um, catching up from being behind from not really playing a creature uh, later on. Or you leverage it specifically against combo decks. So kind of take, take consideration when playing with a card as volatile as counterbalance if you were to do so. Next up... Next up, we have Blue White Blade. So if we go back to our main deck configuration, which is these cards here, um, Blue White Blade, you want as many blast effects as you can muster. Um, Spell Snare is also very good against decks like that. And then you want as many threats as you can muster as well. Move these back. So we have. Let's take a look at. So we have sixty three cards right now, um, and we want to also take a look at some of our additional like possible options. So in our possible pile, we have force of negations, counterbalances, uh, abrades, winter orbs, fluster storms, narsets, and spell piercers. So we have a lot of cards we could be boarding in a matchup like this. So instead of kind of looking at it like the other approaches that we've made so far and basically looked at what we want in and then taking cards out, let's solidify our base of what cards we want to take out first. Um, against Blue-White Blade, I think you can afford to take out some number of your Chain Lightning effects. While Stoneborn Mystic hitting the table is difficult to deal with in a lot of cases, you have more widely applicable answers post-board and... Uh, against uh, against um, Stoneforge Mystic if it were to hit on turn 2 and you can just in general play around a lot of those cards um, next up I'd, I'd like to do something kind of unconventional um, against the blade matchup and I like to board out a lot of my like force or 2 for 1-esque effects um, sometimes shaving on dazes as well and the reason for it is because I treat the matchup kind of like uh, a rock mirror or something where both players try to resolve threats and while sort of answering your opponents and their threats are I let me let me rephrase I like to play more like a Jundi style deck where I try to overlord on the removal uh, without fighting over it um, and hope their removal doesn't line up well against what I've got going on. For example, if they rely on Judgment or Supreme Verdict, usually I'll have gained or generated a card or two off of Draenor Arcanist or Pyromancer attacking interaction with my opponent uh, insofar. Um, so these six, I think, are clean, um, are things you can definitely trim upon. Uh, you might be able to board out some number of Wastelands as well, depending on if you see Blue-White um, or Blue-White-Red, Esper, and so on. Although I I usually don't like touching the mana base too much, especially if you're boarding in Winter Orbs. 
um, for sure. So those are definitely things to note. But so far, it seems the second snare is something that we're probably not going to ultimately end up playing. So if we look at the abrades, I think we definitely want the abrades in, in, in our deck post board. Um, Spell Pierce is definitely a consideration, but because we have the Pyro Blast, we're just always, almost always tapping out or like playing a cantrip and, and attacking and so on. I value this a little bit more than these. So what happened? Did I accidentally delete a daze? It looks like I did. So just kind of as we're, as we're going down the chain, things that I'm noticing uh, include not really liking the third surgical extraction. Um, I'd like to be able to board in Narset, but I don't know if I can necessarily. Um, which is tricky because Narset is normally a card you want against like kind of a, a, a blue control deck, but because just how our deck is configured and how I like to play um, Blue Red Delver and just kind of use my mana as much as possible, I don't think Narset's really where you want to be in a deck like this. I think three mana is just difficult to kind of reach um, in a lot of those instances. So um, the third Pyroblast has started to kind of look a little iffy as well as the Spell Snare, to be honest. So we want to definitely take out those six cards and we want to board in these eight and then two additional cards. Um, depending on if you're on the play or the draw and so on, I would want some number of these, uh, 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 some number of these two. Um, basically, kind of, just to summarize again, you're, you have to kind of create a game plan and formulate how you want your deck to approach the matchup post board. In my case, I like to not rely too much on fighting over removal, um, because our opponents usually do have like supreme verdicts in their side and, and, and post board as well. And I like to play over threats that our opponents have because they usually are a lot of mana. Or I like to kind of play a get ahead, stay ahead kind of game where I'll have a Delver, I'm attacking with it, I'm forcing them to react to the Delver, um, and then I can use my cantrips to change my game plan appropriately. Uh, just things to note. Um, death attacks is similar but different. Uh, let's see, these are this is our main deck. So against Death and Taxes, um, cards that are obviously stellar. Uh, let's move these back over here for a moment. Abrades are fantastic. Um, True Name is excellent. Blazing Volley is very good. Uh, Echoing Truth is mediocre. So let's leave it at, and Vapor Snag is also kind of mediocre. So let's leave it at these five for now. Uh, and then cards that are not good in the matchup from our side are, um, I'm not the biggest fan of, again, like the conditional counter magic, uh, though days is good if our opponent is like boarding in like a stack of uh, council judgments and so on. So we have five cards we want to board in, but um, we're, we need to cut a card from our main deck. I... I could see cutting a daze a while you're on the draw or a force if you're on the play and kind of being that very tempo oriented game plan. So kind of picking and choosing what you want to do uh, and then boarding these five in. If you want to board out two cards, you can board in the additional young pyromancer. Um, you can board out winter orbs and so on. But our game plan is matchup is to kind of get a fast start uh, with a Delver or a kind of Arcanist and just riot to victory while looking as much as possible as we can for a card for true nemesis easily the best card in the matchup um and also looking for our like removal spells for opposing snowforge mystics and aether vials and so on pretty easy um metric to understand uh and you have a certain number of core cards that are going to be exceptionally good at all times so that's a dozen taxes then rug delver uh against rug delver and Something else to note, by the way, is I'm not boarding out cantrips. I think cantrips, um, I think Blue Red Delver is a 12 cantrip deck. And that I would only really board out cantrips against like Chalice decks specifically. Um, you're looking for a two mana threat if you do not have a turn one threat and you want to cantrip for it 95% of the time. 
which is also why I I I don't really like playing spell pierce in a deck like this, but in some cases it's a necessary evil, so just take that for what you will. Um so we covered blue-eyed blade, done taxes, red delver. So red delver, um the force of wills are fine, not great. The chain lightnings are fine, not great. Uh, cards that I like in the matchup against Rug Delver. Um, depending on whether you want Hydro Blast or not. Um, I don't really like any of the counter magic. I like the Vapor Snags. I like the Young Pyromancer, and I like the Trina Nemesis quite a bit. Um, I like the Spell Snare as well. I don't think we're going to play the second one. I think just that's just too many. Um, so we have the this threat base, and then I like boarding like this or like boarding out the dazes over the and keeping the forces in your mileage may vary depending on how you want to sideboard um again you have to be disciplined when you use counterbalance because if you have no ways to pull ahead while behind and counterbalance in a fair matchup it's probably best to stay in your sideboard uh, if you were to play it so the matchup here revolves around basically sticking your threats and respecting as much as you possibly can, the card Tarmogoyf. Um, that is the the crux of the matchup. And if you can play around or beat a Tarmogoyf, you will you will pull ahead. Okay. Next up is Monored Stumpy. Monored Stumpy is fairly easy to understand how the matchup works. Um, but basically, True Name is your worst threat in the matchup. So I think it's the card that can easily get boarded out. Um, it's a child's matchup, so I can see boarding out a preordain or two. Uh, and then finally boarding out uh, some number of chain lightnings because it's easily your worst removal spell in the matchup. It's a good still because your opponent still has like eight or I think some even play like 12 or so um, goblin rebel master effects. But just due to the nature of how you're sideboarding, it's, it's difficult to do that. So cards that I think are good in the matchup are Young Pyromancer, not Vapor Snag, not Trina Nemesis, not Spell Snare. Uh, Hydro Blast is good. A Braid is very good. Echoing Truth is good. Um, and I think Force of Negation is also pretty good in this matchup because your opponent is often a one spell per turn kind of deck. Um, and so six forces in your deck are going to be are gonna have a fair bit of mileage. So if you board out these these five in for these seven, you have two more cards to play with. Um, you could board in Winter Orb, though I think that's uh, a scary strategy, uh, to be honest. Um, that's like kind of riding, riding on the razor's edge there. So I would probably just board in um, a Chain Lightning and a Preordain, or a Chain Lightning and a Chain Lightning or a... Oh, I'm sorry. There's actually a very clear inclusion that I missed out on. Spell Pierce. Excellent in this matchup. So these, this is how my deck would look like in post-board against uh, Mono Red Stompy, which is it's a, it's a fairly clean-looking uh, post-board configuration, in my opinion. Um, Miracles. Okay, so this is a matchup that I'm intimately familiar with. Uh, I have built Miracles decks to beat up on opposing... Um, Blue Red Delks, Blue Red Delver decks, and then also vice versa. So this is our main deck, I believe. Yes. Okay. Great. So in this matchup, basically you want all of these cards, <laughs> um, which is a lot of a particular subset of cards, to be honest. So you want seventeen cards in this matchup, which is a lot. So cards I dislike, I don't like the dazes that much. And also in this matchup, I like to not board in my as many forces and as many dazes. I, I play this matchup very similarly to how I'd approach blue-white Stoneblade, but even more insulated, um, if you can believe it. So we're taking out these six cards. Um, and I'm leaving in all the bolts because you can kind of play this game where your opponent you're just drawing into lightning bolt to deal like those last few bits of damage. Chain lightning is not so good. Um, if you're needing to trim those effects, it's, I mean obviously it's still game, but I, good. But I think these other options in our sideboard are just significantly better. Um, because miracles has a hard time dealing with uh, getting ahead if behind, 
Uh, it relies on Terminus, so Counterbalance is actually fairly good in this matchup in in, in, in most instances. Um, Pyroblast affects as many as you possibly can. It can fit. Um, True Name, good threat, but worse, I think, than a lot of these other options. Uh, Winter Orb, fantastic in this matchup. Um, you don't necessarily need the addition of Pyromancer. Um, you can take it or leave it with the Force Invigations as well. I think Spell Pierce is actually better than Force of Negation a lot of the time. Um, because it's, you're, you're playing the Winter Orb game. And so if you are playing the Winter Orb game... Um, actually, if Winter Orb is in our sideboard, we can do this. We can do something like this, um, which is basically revolving our game plan around the existence of Winter Orb in our deck, um, and just playing this like really, really, really resilient, um, low to the ground uh, as much as possible kind of Delver deck, where our threats are non-creatures. I, I think we're just going to cut this in our set, by the way. If we're not boarding, if we don't really have the room to board in in, in these other matchups, I don't think there's a reason to play it at all. Um, and basically sticking a creature while having your opponent end up dealing with one of your non-creature removal, uh, non-creature elements. Um, so yeah, that's the, the, the matchup pretty much boils down to putting a creature into play and not overextending to protect it while subverting our cyber plan to having these artifacts or enchantments that Miracles has a tough time dealing with. If you can do that, you'll eventually end up winning the game basically uh, no matter what. Uh, four color control. Similar in concept to um, Miracles and then the other control decks that we've seen. Four color control, they place so much spot removal um, that it's going to be very difficult for you to really fight against it. What am I missing? Chain lightnings, that's what it is. So in this matchup, because of the, just the, the glut of one-for-one one, uh, answers, you can once again board out Chain Lightnings, um, board out some forces but not all, and board out... Uh, I, I don't know if you really want to board out Dazes because they're so, so mana-hungry. Um, they can play around Daze fairly effectively, but you can force them to play into, you, into it repeatedly. Um, another thing to note is that Dreadwar Argon is actually very, very good at forcing your opponent to play into Daze. Um, it just creates this like really, really, really intense sub game that forces your opponent to simply lose today's if you have it. Um, so I would probably board out these four cards at minimum, but we can look at what we want to board into. I would not rely so much on True Name in this matchup, and I know that's weird to say, but they have a a multitude of answers against both True Name and um, they have they have Plague Engineers. Uh, but I think it's still very... Let, let me rephrase. True Name is not the end-all be-all threat in this matchup by any means. Um, so you have to be very, very like tight about it. I would probably start by boarding in Hydroblast. Um, some number of Pyroblasts. Maybe... I, I think we actually just need as many creatures as we possibly can handle. Um, these and the snare. I would want to leave the rest of these cards in the sideboard, I think. Just we're we're just not gonna be able to leverage um counterbalances in, in the matchup, I don't think. So if we board in if we board like this and we want to board out these four cards, we have exactly sixty. Now you can make some considerations with boarding out some number of dazes for additional, like keeping chain lightnings or um, boarding into spell pierce effects and and, and so on. Um, the issue I have with the soft permission in general uh, in a deck like this and just in legacy as a whole right now is that if something ever hits the table, it is so powerful and gets you so far ahead that your opponent just gets buried. So you're 
in my opinion, the best way to attack a kind of slam based um, format is to slam back. Uh, and that involves playing these winter orbs, uh, perhaps playing these counterbalances instead of the dazes or um, the additional for the, the relevant forces and so on. Just being also to the table to playing a threat that your opponent has to care about. So that's my two cents. Uh, okay. So we have these. We're back to our initial configuration. Our last, uh, we, have, we have two decks left. We have Ad Nauseam Tendrils and Four Color Delver. Um, Ant, uh, as a deck, is where kind of our main game plan revolves around basically hitting, getting to the table as quickly as possible while keeping our opponents off, off balance. Just like, it's a, it's a regular Delver deck game plan. Um, these are all of the cards I believe to be good against Storm, or cards that I actively want post board against Storm. And these are cards I definitely do not want in my deck. So if we go like this, we'll have one additional slot left to play with. Um, so this is against like the side unseen, like just good cards against combo plan. However, um, if you want to hedge a bit further, you can probably board out some more bolts for pierces, um, pyroblasts, echoing truths, and blazing volleys in order to justifiably play around empty the warrens. Um, I will say that I don't necessarily recommend that in most cases, just due to the fact that you have to be able to, um, you, you, you just have to leverage your ability to play uh, around your opponent grinding you to dust, um, because the deck definitely can do that. I will say that perhaps the fourth bolt is worse than the first Blazing Volley, and I don't think we're ever going to be playing two Blazing Volleys, honestly. Um, so that's good to know. So we're we're starting to cut down on our on our cards, which is great. Which is that's the whole point of this exercise in the first place. So uh, you'll notice that maybe the second force negation also is just causing our mapping to be incorrect because we just have so many cards um, in so many spots that we want. Um, second Vapor Snag also probably not that good. I think one Vapor Snag, one Echoing Truth is actually like reasonable to play. So there's that. So we're back here now, back to our, our original core. And we're down to 24 cards. Uh, four Color Delver, once again, uh, it doesn't really change much. Um, you maybe prioritize counterbalances a bit more heavily in that matchup because your creatures are so much more taxed with these and so of abrupt decay in in that specific matchup. Um, but that's kind of like a player draw, just like Delver dichotomy of always playing to the board ahead of your opponent, um, and playing this kind of Jund esque concept. So uh, we are down from our initial set of cards. Uh, we can probably not use the third surgical as well. Oh, surgical extraction is another card I actually missed against Ant because that's a, probably a card you want as well because they can pass in flames loop against you. Um, so we we've gotten we've trimmed down to the cards that we are considering playing quite a bit, but um, we're not really happy exactly where we're where we're at right now. I don't think. Um, we have to fill out our main deck first. So of these specific matchups, Hogag Depths, Blue Red Delver, Blue White Blade, DNT, Rug Delver, Mono Red Stompy, Miracles, and Four Color Control, and so on, um, we have four slots to play with. And something to note, and something that I want to try uh, when building a deck like this, is playing the counterbalances to be leveraged uh, by the Arcanist. Arcanist plus Cantrips plus Counterbalances like, creates this really, really cool... Um, uh, combo, well, I'm a combo, some might say. Uh, like this this quick preview of this Arcanist Miracles deck that I've been slowly working on um, kind of is, is a testament to that. But uh, I think where we first want to start off is with three true names um, and a Spell Pierce main. Although I don't like this card very much, I think Spell Pierce and a Spell Snare 
um, kind of give us some additional coverage that we need. And I could see playing the additional Arcanist. However, that puts us to four, eight, um, 12, sorry, 4, 8, <laughs> 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 creatures, which is two more than I think most Delver decks like to play. Um, but I think it's okay uh, because you can, you you have additional filtering with your Dreho Arcanist. So this is what we arrived at in our 60. And if you recall, I believe it's the same 60 as the winner of MKM Frankfurt. Um, they cut one cantrip for a force of negation, but I'm keeping 12 cantrips. Uh, and they're playing four young pyromancers, and I'm playing three and three true names. Um, just because as we kind of went through our mapping, true name and young pyromancer are good in different matchups. Um, and I don't think I'm ever going to want to be playing the fourth young pyromancer. So we have 19 cards for our sideboard. Um, we did not board in the surgicals as often as we'd like to, but that's only looking at the snapshot of like the top eight decks or the top eight, nine, ten, what have you. And I think it's really, really hard to dismiss the existence of surgical in your deck. Um, I will say that if you play multiple copies of force of negation, however, it gets a little bit better, but again, um, it's hard to say. Let's see if we want to cut this down to four cards. I could see boarding out a Pyroblast because you're not really that worried about opposing blue decks, especially not right now, um, where that th the first Hydroblast maybe has more equity than the third Pyroblast does in a lot of matchups. Um, I don't think we need the... I think the first Force of Negation has more equity than the second Spell Pierce in a lot of matchups as well. So we have two additional cards that we have to get rid of. Maybe Flustrum not... It helps in some problematic matchups, but um, again, we're in such a, a period of time where Storm decks even are even playing like Veil of Summers and so on, that it's just difficult to leverage a card like this. Um, I will also say that I think the one ofs in our deck are usually amplified a bit more powerfully as well because we can filter to them a lot more quickly than I think any other double deck because we're playing the four Arcanists in our deck. Um, so things that I'd probably want to try if I were to build this deck um, now would be maybe cutting either the Truth or the Snag, and I think probably the Truth because I like Snag better in Delver Mirrors, um, and then cutting the second plus Storm and just kind of playing playing with the numbers here, of course, uh, depending on what metagame I'm expecting. So uh, in conclusion. Uh, we've talked about sideboard mapping uh, overall and kind of boiling down the options that a core deck has uh, across a breadth of matchups and how to narrow down our options based on whatever metagame we expect to play. Um, but there are a couple of caveats, of course. Legacy as a whole uh, is very much a, especially when you're talking about like GPs and so on, people either prepare for GPs by looking at online results or they just play the deck that they've always played. Um, and it's in order to get to the metagame that we see before us, you have to already win um, quite a bit. It, that's essentially the winner of the metagame because that's, that, that's what gets reported. Um, and you can't really forget about the matchups that you will probably not face um, in the winner's side of like a, a tournament bracket. Um, not to say that the, those decks are bad, it's just they're less played. Um, so you have to kind of always be prepared for instances like that even then like even now with this video at the very beginning i i discussed talking about green black depths but because of the prevalent result for hogak depths we shift our game plan around that deck instead although the the, the sideboarding and understanding of the matchup became very similar um they just had more things you had to worry about so uh this video is getting to be over an hour and a half, um, but I hope that this exercise of understanding how to build a Cohesive 75 is fruitful to you. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you enjoy our content, please consider throwing a subscription uh, to uh, MinMax down below uh, in, on the YouTube. Uh, and keep a lookout for our stuff uh, on most Wednesdays throughout the year. 
uh, thank you once again. Take care.